Hello, friends. Welcome back to Random Gleanings. He's Chris. I am Jesse. And Chris, three years ago, um, Vegas was going to be no more. Yeah. Right? Yep. Uh, I believe you've just come back from Vegas. Was 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 there anyone there to speak of, or were you and yep. your family there alone? Yeah, family vacation, did national parks. Got a great itinerary for you if you're interested. Uh, but we did Vegas flying in, Vegas flying out. Here's a picture. There were people everywhere everywhere and i was texting you saying this does not look like a recession to me Dude. i i mean and that and and the costco parking lot on a saturday yeah no, <laughs> really no any kidding. day no kidding <laughs> so. so you know the the consumer is pretty interesting one of the points heath made my wife was you know keep in mind these people bought these tickets three or four months ago to be here could be longer than that but and i thought that was an interesting point here's something Car- carl quintanilla said uh, on Twitter yesterday, U.S. screens the highest number of air passengers in a single day since 2019. So I don't know if it's revenge travel or people just have plenty of money in their pockets at this mo- moment in time or if they're spending too much. But at the end of the day, uh, people are still moving about the country. They sure the are. World. Yep. By the yep. way, to that point, we commented in the national parks so many times, you were just as likely to hear a foreign language in the national parks as you were uh, English. Wow, how about that? So people are coming from all over. That's good. Yep. Um, and I just pulled this. We were I know we were going to talk about uh, air travel, and I, I was leaning back onto my Chicago days thinking, oh, busiest airport's definitely still still Chicago, and it's not. Uh, Atlanta, our, our, our neighbor here, uh, beats everybody by a long shot. By a whole lot. By a and lot. It, and Dubai's coming on pretty strong. Beat out mm-hmm. L.A., is that right? Yeah, yeah, they did, and and I will later be traveling to your point about pre-booking some tickets. I've got travel that will be going through Atlanta and Dallas yeah. later in the year, so uh, I will I will add to those numbers later this year. So let's talk about the consumer. Next, next chart. Um, you know, the savings rate over the last 90 years has long-term been about 9%, right? Yep. As of April of 23, according to Bank of America Global Research, 4.1% is the current savings rate, which ain't real high compared to the past. It's it's not. Um, I think, you know, again, I, I don't know all the dynamics. I understand that a lot of people saved a lot in when the government was handing out money, and that upped those numbers that you see there in that chart back to 2020. But um, they're either spending that stuff down and not saving what's coming in, or or something has changed. So. I mean, you know, the I word that we're also tired of is what most people would point to. Well, everything costs more. Yeah. And I mean, that's probably the case. Um, I mean, real wages haven't necessarily kept up very well with, that's right. with um, real costs. So that those all may be reasons why the savings rate is lower, but it's lower, okay? And here's another reason it, it may be strained even further. So this is, um, you know, October is when student loans pick back up again, right? They've been in forbearance, what, now for three years? Three years, yeah. Which is crazy. So I saw this tweet, and... I, candidly, it it set me off. Uh, student loan repayment is more than my rent and due starting in October. At POTUS, how do you expect Americans to pay this? Well, I mean, you went to school, right? I, anyway, um, sorry. Student loans and, and their interests are a class tax on people with working class heritage. So, okay, I looked this gal up, and she went to Columbia University, so... Come on. I mean, give me a break. I, yeah, you, you make some choices. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is student loans are coming back. They're right? coming back. That's going to be – I think that that will probably hurt that contingency of the consumer. There's no question about it. And and her statement is pretty astounding, just how much she has to pay versus what her rent is and all that other stuff. But nonetheless – uh, well, she's I mean, going to be spending less on Starbucks. But I mean, <laughs> three years of not paying it all of a sudden means it's some sort of tax it, on it, you. It, I mean, it, you knew it was there. I mean, that's was, that's to me, that's the problem is that for those that um, save for their kids to go to school, it seems maybe unfair that people don't have to pay it back. So I, I, I don't care to get into that whole debate. Agreed. But, but all that's to say is there will be a paradigm shift for those that have outstanding student loan payments 
that the the clock is now ticking that you're going to have to start making those payments again. And where does that additional dollar come from? If, as this lady presents herself, I've I've just spent all that extra money. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> this will be the big question: Will student loan repayments, which you cannot declare bankruptcy right. from, um, you know, slow the consumer now? Meanwhile. Let's talk about banks. We haven't talked about banks in a while. So, you know, I felt it was important to pull this chart back out. Um, Ever since the Silicon Valley Bank um, situation back in March, banks did get worse. They have recovered somewhat since that May time frame, but they're they're still below sort of that overhang, if you will. That Um, that initial drop, right? I mean, I remember you you brought this chart out and we talked about those two levels and they did. They they got over that first hump. But they started to approach the second level, which was really a massive decline from earlier in the year anyway. Oh, yeah. But but they've turned around again. And so um, trouble still um, looks a little bit wary out there. So it's interesting to me. This is from uh, Bob Elliott. He used to be at, at Bridgewater for years. Um, banks funding conditions keep improving. Uh, borrowings, the, the best timely measure of stress keeps declining. And by borrowings, he means from banks borrowing from the Fed. Uh, deposits have been flat since Silicon Valley Bank back in March. Uh, credit extension is picking up, meaning banks are lending more money, right? And then in yellow here, the be- the Fed's big bet, this is going to bring the economy down, meaning slow it because Chairman Powell said, we think, you know, bank lending will be part of what mm-hmm. lends itself to slowing the economy. Uh, so so you know, the Fed's big bet that bank lending will slow the economy down looks dead wrong. And, and here's why that's interesting to me. Um, our friend Jamie Dimon that runs uh, J.P. Morgan – uh, here's his his picture looking very astute, very, very wise. Presidential, maybe. And presidential, maybe. <laughs> that's right. Um, he was quoted toward the end of May. And by the way, he's been consistent on this, mm-hmm. though the numbers are starting to get bigger now. He's saying, I think everyone should be p- prepared for rates going higher from here, up to 6 or 7%, even Jamie Dimon of, of J.P. Morgan has said. Yeah, I, I, what I what I take away from that is uh, at times uh, I've heard, hey, you know, I, I really like what you guys talk about, but maybe give me something actionable. If if rates continue to get higher, you better have your credit cards paid off because I think the average rate right now is twenty one, twenty two percent. If they go, you know, if the Fed brings it up to six seven, you're going to be at twenty five percent on a credit card. That's not good for your financial future. It's not, but also. What it could mean from a um, bond market standpoint is is more of a challenge yeah, in all sure. candor. And, I mean, it's not guaranteed that it's going to get to that point, but it does make the bond market more of a challenge as well, which then ultimately would make the stock market more of a challenge. Well, I mean, to, to Diamond's point, um, you know, last week— uh, we had announced that there was going to be a Fed meeting, and and in that meeting they put out the the new dot plot for the quarter. And in the dot plot, while there was a pause by the Fed in this last meeting, the new dot plot did suggest that that Fed governors expect two more rate hikes before the end of the year, which would push us up to five, what uh, seventy five, seventy five, right? Yeah. So, um, getting pretty close to what what Diamond has been predicting, and. He's somebody that kind of knows rates and knows yeah knows, knows banking systems. So um, I got nothing else this week. What have you got? Anything else? I'd vote for him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Nothing else. Let's uh, see your Zion sticker. Any any yeah. just harrowing tales out of uh, out of the West? Zion's awesome. Of the of the five national parks in Grand Canyon, Zion's by far my favorite. I've spent a lot of time out that way, but. Uh, Zion was epic. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, send it to a friend or a family member who may benefit. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week and hit subscribe along the way. Thanks. <laughs>